Welcome back to another hour of Sky Tower. I am Noah. I'm Jesse. All right, Jesse. Hopefully uh, everyone had a good week. Hopefully you had a great week this past week. Fabulous. And um, this week here, we uh, our Scotch of the Week is going to be Glenn Sco- Scotia. 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 Okay. Glenn Scotia. Nice. One year I, below legal. <laughs> if you're under in some sa- In some states, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I do like the black box. I like the black and gold there. But being a CU Buff fan, I do like black and gold nonetheless. Black and and gold. it's almost football season. Black and yellow. Black. <laughs> and then we got our shout outs and get it together as well as our God damn restaurant. <laughs> as long as our, as well as our restaurant review, which is the uh, Pendistry. Pen, pen industry. Industry. Yeah, it's like industry with the P in the front of it. I'm not really sure. It's, like, it's a pin industry, pinball, pin okay. industry, yeah, pin industry. And then our our smart challenge being weird science. Weird science. John Hughes, 1985. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't even born yet, but great movie. About to leave. Already packing. Come with me. Scotch of you. We'll get away. Glenn Scotia. Man, 15 year old classic. Campbelltown malt. Not a whole lot to uh, really delve into with that, but it's going to be delicious. Uh, they won the world's best whiskey award in 2021 for their 25 year malt, which is pretty impressive because as we've continued to learn and grow and study different scotches, different malts, one thing you learn is that the age actually has fairly minimal significance beyond what the cask can induce upon the spirit. Like, I don't have much uh, much information on uh, Glen Scotia or Scotia, um, Scotia. Um, in fact, I didn't find any tour information or anything like that, but I didn't really dig super deep. So it's supposed to have great flavor from its American oak select, select American oak barrels and, uh, it's supposed to have a delicious seaside flavor subtly in that vanilla oak flavor. So we're going to find out, uh, really the one thing they tout is aromatic fruits. I did see that, and I also saw that they like their distillery goes back to uh, 1830. Yeah, and you got to look at the box. It says rich and smooth, so that means he got money and he shaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, she has money and she shaves. That's what she said. <laughs> You're looking for a sugar mama? She has money and she shaves. You're looking for a sugar daddy? He has money and he shaves. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> lots of sugar there. <laughs> So sweet. Let's eat. <laughs> All right. 46%. So sweet. Let's taste this shit. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. What were you saying there? 46% <laughs> ABV. No, I'm right there with you, man. Like this handsome box, something that I would happily present even to like a bachelor party where it's not just a bunch of girls. Imagine that. No girls at my bachelor party. So with that. Why would there be any women at a bachelor party? Because the guy isn't satisfied. Toxic masculinity. I mean, the only women you're going to have there are going to be the strippers, right? I'm just saying, what's more important beyond the right woman? Scotch, cigars, and strippers, <laughs> dude. Come on. You don't even need the strippers. Who's paying attention to the strippers? Nobody. We got scotch and cigars. That's my point. Like, so, whoa, okay. So, yeah. One of my shouts is going to my daughter for watching uh, so much, and, and I'll get there, of uh, Vampire Diaries with me. But one of my favorite lines from one of the main characters is, basically, he's like, man, at this age, whenever I see something new, I throw a dollar in it. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Dude, it's like the bomb.com. Like, yeah, I've seen everything. That's great. Nothing new. You know what I haven't seen? Glen Scotia, 15-year American cask age scotch in my mouth yet. So, uh, any further memorabilia from you with this malt scotch whiskey? Uh, none. Dude, they do a pretty nice job with this foil. I'm not going to lie. Like, a lot of times, they do a foil when it's pretty loose on there. This one is so pressed that I actually had to work to open it. They've got the embroidery on the top of the foil as well as the front and the sides. So you're Here's saying the she's tail. making you work for it, huh? Dude, you got to work for it. Here's the thing, though, man. They still haven't learned. Like, this is wood. It's 
stained. It's beautiful. It goes with the bottle, everything about it. Take the extra 15 cents. Put that gold stamp on the wood. All right. I agree. You hear that? I did hear Sounds that. Sounds like something's coming out of Vampire's Crypt. Every walrus loves a tight seal. Bruh. That's a handsome looking scotch. Yes, yes it is. You like Brian that one time? Dude, it has no lid in it. It's not been corked. He's all like trying to pull it out. Like, yeah, will this work? All right. Glen Scotia. I don't know why I like to say it's Glen Scotia. I know why, because that's why it looks like to me, but Glen Scotia. Like Nova Scotia. Like Nova, yeah. Um, the 15 year here, um, it does have a really nice, dark, brassy, amber color to it. I love that color. Um, and I'm guessing that probably is coming from the shard oak, some of this deep color here, which I, I love. I think it's great. Um, when I do. Um, when I go to smell the uh, the scotch or the bouquet, I'm getting a sweet fruit with some apricot apple pie. And not only apple pie, but also like with a hint of sea breeze to it too. And then on the palate, I'm getting a, a nice fruity but spicy apple pie. And like on the nose, it's just like a nice uh, inviting apple pie, like a sweet one. But it's almost like having a nice spicy where you have like a little bit more cinnamon in the apple pie when you bite into it. And it has a nice little like cinnamon spice to the apple pie to it with rich, creamy vanilla. So to me, it just kind of just it just screams like Thanksgiving dessert with apple pie and uh, a nice, great like uh, vanillas, uh, a vanilla ice cream to go with it. And it has a nice, long, lingering, spicy finish to it which I put in, in my notes, is nutmeg and cinnamon. And uh, and I think that just kind of ties back into that whole, like, apple pie thing. Um, on the nose, though, um, I did put uh, some of it in my palm and warmed it up that way. I did get some hints of, like, a nice toasted oak to it, which I did enjoy as well. Um, but on the, initial, um, on the initial pass, when I was um, smelling the bouquet, I didn't really catch that, uh, that oak until I actually put in my palm, which I thought was great as well. I, I think this is a one that, ooh, I could be, I can see myself very easily being selfish with this one and not sharing it with people. But at the same time, I can see me taking this one out to an event, uh, to some kind of event, whether it's poker night or a housewarming party or something like that. Just kind of like, show her off! <laughs> Um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't quite go like that route, but I would say like it would be something nice to like um, to be show something showy, but not be pretentious. And uh, I think it I think it does really well. It has it has like a nice uh, and, and like the the box is nice. the The labeling on the bottle is great, with especially with how you have like the. Uh, I don't know, is that like the emblem on the on the bottle there? Or what's yeah, it? buddy, do that. It's like ribbing for her pleasure. <laughs> so so with this with this particular one here, I can definitely see like, you know, like taking it to some place where you want to impress but not be, you know, pretentious. And and I and I do think I think most people would enjoy this one.
Oh, man, I don't know about most people. People would taste absolutely, as you mentioned, Glen Scotia, 1832. Handsome bottle, great Ugh, embedded in the glass. The box to this box is probably one of the sexier boxes. It is a sexy scene. Uh, the black and gold, right? This is like prom if you're 21, dating an 18 year old. It's illegal at that point, also, by the way, fellas. But uh, prom or a wedding party, or you're just a badass party, or you're old enough to drive and you want to represent, this is going to do the job. Uh, handsome, for sure. For me, the color. This is the uh, closest thing I can remember since uh, the the McKellen edition number six. This is this medium copper, like it's beyond brass. This is medium copper, almost dark copper, super fantastic color, very inviting. Makes you want to know what could be that dark besides a delicious scotch charred oak and flavor infused. On the nose for me, it's really interesting. This is a very complex scotch. I get a, a hint of that citrus peel. Uh, the closest thing I could say, though, is it's also somewhat sweet. Actually, the nose is very sweet. It's like orange peel, almost smoked meets honey. It's this orange marmalade scent. And then you mentioned apple pie. I'm going apple cobbler, buddy, dude. Like it's got that. That's what brings in the sea brine, though, right? That cobbler, that okay. that crust on the top. Uh, like if you've never had it, by the way, apple cobbler. You actually sprinkle some of those giant margarita granules of salt across the top, and then a couple granules of the sugar brings out both the salt and the spice. Ultimately, that sea brine flavor. Uh, that is this. Finish on the nose to a T for me on the palate. Right off the bat, it is literally vanilla. I wouldn't say super creamy, but definitely sweet fruit forward. I like I, I struggle to say it, but I get this hint of peach, but I don't think it is peach. I think you nailed it with apricot. Apricot followed by a ginger, cinnamon, apple, cobbler. Just delicious. The finish for me right now, long. That's what she likes. Long finish. Spice. I'm not burning my throat. Not hot. No heat. Cinnamon and... A little bit of ginger, but ultimately it's the dry oak. It's got a very dry finish. And if you like that, this is a great scotch. Once again, man, I am with you. You don't need to be super selfish with this one, right around the $100 mark for a bottle. However, wouldn't blame you if you did. So, yeah, for me, this is a win. Would I take it to a poker game? Absolutely, especially if I'm having fun and it's a special event with the guys. Would I take it to a wedding party? Absolutely. Would people enjoy this if they have any taste? There's the actual key. I don't know that the average bourbon drinker would enjoy this. Uh, the average scotch drinker would enjoy it. The uh, advanced scotch drinker would absolutely cherish this wonderful treasure from charred oak color to honey finished fruit forward flavor. It's, it's, a, it's a win for me. It's time for our shout outs. All right, do you have any shout outs? This oh week? man, hey, let, dude, All right, you that, follow Formula One. You know my number one shout out. First stop in <laughs> once again. Coming starting from 14 way, or 16? Uh, way back, middle of the pack. I think it was 13, 14. It's way back, middle of the pack. I think it was actually 14. Winning the race. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, 
all together, get it together, then goes with Lewis Hamilton. Did you see him trying to, like, blame the guy he literally turned into? He's got a car length on the outside of his car around the turn, turns into him, then gets all frustrated and, and verklempt that the other guy didn't just run off the track for him. Hell no, Hamilton. <laughs> I saw him taking a walk of shame. As he should have. That was ridiculous. Literally ridiculous. Fun to watch. But uh, here's the important part. It's, it's almost like reverse year. Because five years ago, Verstappen was the one making errors in my mind that were silly and unnecessary like that. Now Hamilton's making those. Is, it just, is he getting old? Maybe. Who knows? I know my eyesight isn't what it was 20 years ago for sure. Hamilton needs to get it together. We're stopping. Man, shout out. All right. I have two shout outs this week. Let's hear them, buddy. So my first shout out is going to go to my younger brother, Adam. Um, I'm going to do a family one here. So I'm going to give him a shout out for two things. One, he helped me move in my mattress, which um, I tell you what, I think my chiropractor will be extremely happy about that. I know my back is happy about that so far. So will your 12 girlfriends. (laughs) And then um, oh, also, wait, ten. Uh, Adam did make me some uh, CBD oil, some homemade CBD oil, which is awesome. Um, you know, I I I've read some benefits about CBD oil, but I've always been kind of skeptical about them, so I never really bought them. Uh, so Adam had said uh, he had had this machine to where you can make them. So I got some CBD oil uh, from Adam, and so I'm going to try those out. So I want to give him a shout out for that. My second shout out goes to you. What the hell what did I do? What the hell did you do? <laughs> well, obviously, I'm giving you a shout out. It must oh, be something shit. good, right? I don't know, man. <laughs> I make some stupid mistakes too. Just saying. Well, here's the thing. Um, obviously, I have no kids, but I can appreciate people who do have children and 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 that want that want to do good for their children. So, I just think it was uh, pretty awesome. Like I know. Um, I usually like when you have your children over, I, I kind of make myself pretty much go so if I can. Don't need to do that. Man. Uh, but ready. here's the thing is that I think it's awesome how you knew that your daughter is a super into this like vampire diaries <laughs> show. And, uh, you said, sure. You, like you knew like it was going to go off air here in a couple days from Netflix. And you took the time to do like a huge marathon of watching the show with her. And I'm not sure if it's because you did it for her or because you actually enjoy the show yourself or a little bit of both. But uh, bottom line, I think it's awesome that you found something that interests your daughter uh, and you were willing to spend time with her, especially, you know, since it's uh, almost getting really close to uh, going back to school. And I know you've been doing a lot of stuff with your, you know, for your son as well. So I just want to give you a shout out for being a, a good father, a father figure who um, has actually been an influence on their life. And I think that's something that's lacking a lot of, in a lot of children. And I, and I think that's, that is done, um, uh, I, I think it's done on purpose by the government and other people to try to remove fathers from their children. And I, I think it makes for a weaker society. So I think it's, an, I think it's awesome that you're sitting there uh, spending time with your kids and finding interest that, in what they want or what they like and spending time with them doing those things. Thank you, Noah. Uh, cheers, man. Uh, I actually really appreciate that for so many reasons. He's not wrong. Um, my shout-out was actually going to go to my daughter for enduring that with me, although I don't know how much she had to endure it. We watched four or five episodes, I think it was four, of season six, the entire 22-episode series of season seven, and then 10 episodes of of season eight to really wrap it up to 36 maybe 37 episodes uh it's a lot of tv watching but i appreciate you you, uh recognizing that and and i think i i need my daughter to know that mila man my shout out goes to you for a spending that time with me and b like thank you for pointing that out is that i absolutely cherish my littles and not that I wanted to watch 36 hours of Vampire Diaries. I will never forget it, Mila. Um, and I appreciate you for sharing that time with me. 
I will never forget that. I will always remember our two pints of ice cream, our nachos, our grilled chicken and burgers. Aiden, you are a, a piece of this as well. Uh, I will never forget the time we spent together as I got some great Damon and Stefan quotes. Um, and there were some good Elena quotes in there too that I probably won't forget. But um, what I will really take away is there's this TV show aimed at teenagers that reminds me much of the influence that John Hughes films had of which we're, one we're soon to review, and that is, man, how trying of a life it is to transition from teenager to adult. And I think you may have gone through it. I know I absolutely went through it. Uh, mine was absolutely verklumped. It was clusterfucked, <laughs> to say the least. Um, made my mistakes. And uh, Mila, thank you for the time. Thank you, Noah. You're welcome. Um, any um, get it together? Oh my God! Where do I start? Where do I stop? Number one, Biden. Thank you for giving the Ukraine another three billion dollars worth of our assets, and then Biden for relieving ten thousand dollars for some students' debts, which would have cost the government, aka everyone else, including those of you who are relieved around the 103 million dollar mark now it's going to cost you 500 million combined please just start america getting it together and realizing when you get relieved whether it's a man covid stimulus check or any other number of things somebody else is paying for it so yeah uh man he's trying to win and might just do it. I don't even know if people learned their lesson the first time they voted in. He's trying to win all of these votes for a second election. Meanwhile, all of the tax dollars he has cut in saving us pennies in gasoline dollars. A, thank you. B, when do I have to pay for it? Then he goes and gets a bill signed helps influence a bill getting signed everyone who buys an electric vehicle can get up to a seven thousand five hundred dollar credit literally i know you sent me the article one week later ford's like yep yeah, our uh, new ford mustang and mach e that's got the good battery and it's going up eight grand in price so now the new tax credit doesn't even cover the increase in price of a car that can go 400 miles without spending half an hour plus to recharge um, I don't, I don't even know where to stop. Like, please, America, those of you who haven't, open your eyes. There's this weird term, woke, right? Like, all those people are actually sleeping. <laughs> no, please wake up. That's what my only, my only ask is realize the things you may see as these minute benefits are hurting. Okay, here's my other get it together. I'm going to have one more. <laughs> Dude, we've covered this. Was the original moon landing real? Well, today we had <laughs> to stall on Artemis launch. We as America, as NASA, had to stall on Artemis launch because we had a fuel leak. 60-ish years after the original moon landing, we still can't get this right. Maybe just think about that. I need to stop. <laughs> What have you well, got? with the Artemis thing here, it's funny that you brought that out. I, I, I brought that brought that up because I wasn't going to bring it up, but uh, now that you have, it almost makes you wonder: like, did we really go to go to the moon? I've already said that first moon landing was Bologna. So, in other words, so fake me. Maybe, maybe <laughs> the maybe the first one was totally BS. But now you're starting to. I think because of what's going on now, you have to start questioning: Did we ever go? Uh, you mean like Russia backing out of our space program <laughs> and we backing out of even going around the moon, let alone landing on it and uh, leaving it? So, in any case, I'll just leave that one there. That's not even that is not even my get it together. My get it together goes <laughs> to the FBI, dude. This so is the FBI admitted that they uh, and even um, not not just the FBI has admitted this. But now even Mark Zuckerberg has admitted this, that the FBI had contacted them about um, Hunter, uh, Hunter Biden's laptop. And uh, 
combined with both what uh, what a FBI whistleblower has said and what, with what Zuckerberg has said about the FBI contacting um, social media to basically squander any kind of like news about the Biden, uh, Hunter Biden laptop because they know if it was uh, promoted and it was actually in the public, it would have caused a, a basically a, a small landslide victory for Trump. So they, so the FBI, along with Zuckerberg, have fully admitted that they um, suppress important information to influence the uh, presidential election. And uh, this has caused uh, Trump to say that uh, a new election needs to be done uh, soon. Well, it's interesting that you say that right after they invaded his house, uh, obtaining documents he had proving it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, we can't unseal what we were looking for because we took a bunch of stuff that wasn't on that list. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to the FBI. They need to get their shit together. Like not, not even their act. They just need to get everything fucking together. So not a shout out to get together. <laughs> In fact, I think they need to get their shit so far together that they need to just be dismantled. So what you're saying is it was loose stool <laughs> <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dude, it really makes you come full circle to, I don't know, the last 40 or so episodes of our show where we visited things like the moon landing and Kennedy assassination, CIA, FBI, all these different things. We're right there still. When does this forefront actually face? So it's pretty interesting. It is. The scotch slaps. <laughs> Not looking back. Eyes on the freeway. Bonnie and Clyde. Restaurant. Pindustry. Greenwood Village. Pindustry. Uh, it was interesting. That was this evening's restaurant review. It was interesting. The place is a lot bigger. It's like the TARDIS, bigger on the inside. And a few women I've known. But <laughs> <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> with that, we've got an interesting scheme. Bowling, pinball, few arcade games. The food's the question. Why we really went. So we went to Pindustry Restaurant Review and started out finding out, man, Monday, every day, Monday, every hour is happy hour. And who doesn't like happy hour? I mean, I like happy hour when it's good. <laughs> I agree. So with that, we started with a couple of brews. You had the... I actually started off with Ellie's Brown, Avery's Ellie Brown. I love, I like how malty it is, and that's the reason why I usually get that. Um, if I do drink it, man, I started out with a juicy IPA, also good, but man, our palates were not quenched with that. So we went with their twenty-five dollar two for two charcuterie board and bottle of wine. Bottle of wine, I was disappointed in. You can tell it's low quality Pinot. Yeah, and their normal price is forty-two bucks. Uh, the charcuterie board, smaller than expected. That's what she said. But you had some meat. <laughs> it had, well, yeah, it had what four slices of meat on there? <laughs> um, four, like a uh, total, like what six slices of cheese? All right. Yeah, actually, four of the uh, smoked gouda and two of the deliciousness. Yeah, and then yeah, a little bit of strawberry and a little bit. Of, I you know the blackberry on there was a total win. I did like the blackberries. You did? I thought they were a little unripe. Uh, they were a little unripe, but I mean, I, I don't mind them. They weren't bad they for weren't me bad. though, man. I would prefer a more ripe blackberry, but I think it's awesome that they put blackberries on there to begin with. The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but overall, the charcuterie board, I wasn't. I mean, that wasn't very. It was the middle of the road. Yeah. Still, though, you got to consider if you really split that between that and the bottle of wine, twelve fifty, it wasn't bad. bad. Just wasn't great. And you know, here I think this is. I think you're nailing this on the head as far as this restaurant goes, or the the food that they have for a happy hour is that the food. A lot of the food tasted actually pretty decent, but it was not filling. Not only was it not filling. It wasn't satiating. There is a difference. Man, if I have something that's so goddamn good, I don't need anything else even when I'm hungry. Oh, that's good. But we our initial start was a win. It was. Is the uh was it Penny Coast uh, what is it what is it called? I'm not sure what the bread's called. 
I don't remember. Exactly. I know it's a Sicilian bread. Yeah. And it had fig, like fig jam with uh, prosciutto. And a little and, bit of, uh, was it mascarpone or cream, just regular cream cheese? Maybe regular cream cheese. Could have been mascarpone. But in any case, it was, it was, that was actually a really Dude, good dish. That, that's where we started, and that was a win. Like, as far as and food it went all goes. Downhill down there. Yeah, dude, as far as the food goes, that was, what, seven bucks? Eight, I think. Eight. So for $8, that was a 10 out of 10. That in itself. Service was good. Austin was our server. Austin, if uh, we didn't even mention our show, we were just like, hey, what's your name? Because we do a show. Austin, your service was great. So Pindustry, hold on to this young man. He particularly enjoyed, as he told us, doing bigger parties as opposed to single tables. Yeah, I think he did a good job. Um, overall, though, I think, uh, is it a place that I could go meet a friend and just hang out with? Sure. Am I going to take a date there? Mm, you know, maybe if it's in the evening around dusk time, a little bit like when the sun's a little bit closer to sunsetting, it might be a cool place to go up there in the upper patio to have a drink. Not, I would not go there to actually have a um, food, but maybe maybe a couple of cocktails around there on their upper patio. So I can see maybe going there with a, with a date or even on a first date if it's just like a, a stop for a drink type of thing at the right time. I think if you go there in the wrong time, like either too late or too early, I, I would not really agree with that. But if you get if you catch like the right time with the like the sunset, I think that would have a pretty good view. Um, but overall, I think uh, you know it, it was it seemed kind of happening early on in the uh, in the happy hour time frame. I think mostly because the people were probably uh, like work or coworkers or stuff like that coming in from work, um, but. It did really die down right around 7 o'clock. Oh, yeah. It was actually very interesting. So I agree with everything you just said. Here's the interesting piece of this. Man, you got this potentially great environment, unless you're actually trying to have lunch or dinner. <laughs> if you're looking for a snack and some drinks, I think it could be a win. Now, we had the Cayman. Was it Cayman? Carmen? I don't even Pinot know. Pinot Noir? Oh, um... It wasn't Cayman, it wasn't Carmen. It, uh, it was right around there. Anyway, we had a, a Pinot Noir, and the wine wasn't bad. It just wasn't good. Uh, with that, the interesting pieces were, man, that first appetizer with the prosciutto, the cheese, the fig jam, the bread, arugula, lettuce, really add nothing. I couldn't even taste it over the powerful flavors of the prosciutto and the jam. Uh, that was a win got us excited we each had a brew i had an ipa you had a dark we went from there and then we went to the charcuterie board uh with the charcuterie board you got a bottle of wine you could use a red or a white 25 bucks not wrong to go there so we got this bottle of wine in the charcuterie board charcuterie board was good not ample so we went from a great appetizer to Okay. A good appetizer. Now, good means you didn't kick her out of her bed before you were done, right? Right. And then we went to, okay, this wasn't satiating at all. Let's get one of these little pizzas that everyone keeps ordering. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is, the, this is the one where you're like, I didn't even finish it. And I'm like, eh, get out of bed. Go home. I don't even care if you lock the door. Leave it open. I want some fresh air. <laughs> It stinks in here. Like it was not just mediocre pizza. It was. It was worse than Tombstone pizza. Dude, that, that's actually a good point. Let's go get a Tombstone. I can be a more satiated. Just kidding. Not doing that. Let's go have a steak. <laughs> um, but with that, like. I will say this. Though, it was better than 7-Eleven's 7-Eleven pizza. Dude. The cardboard crust. And that's not saying much. Well, we don't know that. We would have to like have saved half of it and tried to eat it the <laughs> next day. Because <laughs> after a show, where you drink a lot, before the show, during the show, after the show, and you have a pizza, and then you're like, this is the best pizza I ever had. And the next morning, you're like, this is a literal cardboard. We don't know. <laughs> it's terrible. So damn bad, man. <laughs> Life adventures worth having. Mila... <laughs> When you're done with the Vampire Diaries and you're safe at home, not driving, and with friends, have one of those. 
<laughs> send your sober friend to go get the pizza so they can film how great it was while you were starving and then the next day show you when you're like how did i eat this cardboard <laughs> yeah it was great last night <laughs> overall i'll probably give the place a six uh for me so we i've really been working on my scale lately and even considering last week's restaurant for me man the food when you average out the three is a six for me the service man the guy was good he wasn't crisp he wasn't clean he wasn't sexy he's a seven uh the atmosphere the only downside to that is uh, obviously i'm getting old my hearing's going i literally had to lean into you to hear over the music and the people the acoustics really offended my ear palate uh so with the environment visually not aesthetic sound wise terrible uh, it's getting a six for me again and then ultimately man it's, yeah i'm right there with you man it's getting a six it wasn't bad like it's fun to go with a friend especially if you're going after hours that's what no and i were talking about while we were there is man this could place could be a ton of fun if you're just trying to like sober up after you had a really good dinner and you could walk here play some bowling play a couple well, of video games on top of that after 8 p.m there's no children allowed so that might be also worthwhile there yeah i only saw two of those midgets while we were there <laughs> No offense, kiddos, but only saw two of the midgets while we were there. And I literally remember looking at Noah and saying, please tell me those are midgets and not little kids. <laughs> well, a couple of things that they, I think they had going on there is they also had like a uh, ping pong available for people to play for free. They also had the, uh, those like lawn, the lawn Jenga, you know, and then they had like a whole section of like corn, uh, corn yeah, I saw that. I still don't understand that. So I, I do think there's like a lot of like fun things that you could be doing there as you're drinking with some friends. So it could be like a lot more of a fun environment later at night when there's like no children around and it's like a little bit cooler outside. But overall, I'd say a six is a, a solid score for it. And if you're just going there, maybe just for drinks and fun, you could probably get it up, bump it up to maybe like a seven or eight. But I wouldn't go there for a restaurant for a restaurant or for food. <laughs> Yeah. All right. All right. This week's smarter challenge. Okay. John Hughes. Weird science. Sticks and stones and pots and bones. I have no idea. I don't even know how the song goes, but you're doing good. <laughs> no, that's not how it all goes. But how it does go is Anthony Michael Hall and Ian Michelle Smith and Kelly LaRock Ooh. with guest stars. Man, Robert Downey Jr. playing a dud. <laughs> uh, the other guest stars in that movie are the Porsche, all the Ferrari, Chet. <laughs> And just uh, a real livelihood of what does it mean to be transitioning from high school to life? Bill Paxton is Chet, who's Dude, the older yeah. brother. Bill Paxton is great. My favorite role for you mentioned this was probably your favorite role for him at one point. For me, my favorite role for Bill Paxton is still in Aliens when he's like <laughs> freaking out. You want to know another good role for Bill Paxton, I think, too, is a movie called Frailty with Matthew McConaughey, mm, where they uh, where they go around murdering people. Uh, this due no to longer sounds familiar. But <laughs> I might know. So Bill Paxton is the dad. Matthew McConaughey is the future son. And they had go around, go around killing people uh, due to the word of God. Well, I have no offense to following God's word. I will say the longer <laughs> this scotch airs out, dude, the more the honey finish is coming out. Ironically, I just watched The Man with the Golden Gun last night, and Honey Rider was not in it, but Pussy Galore was. <laughs> so with that being said, um, what, do you want, what do you want to tackle here with Weird Science? Man, what do you really think about John Hughes and Weird Science? What's great about this movie or not great about this movie? And what I mean by that is I talk to generations. When I talk about generations, I want to say at least 10 years, uh, tops 15 years, one in two generations younger than me, not many people would ever heard of Weird Science. And for me, this was baffling because so many pieces of this movie literally are what we're living in the metaverse today. <laughs> So I would say that anyone who grew up in the 80s 
or even like the early 90s probably had probably had the opportunity to see some of these john hugh hughes movies um which would incorporate something like the breakfast club um 16 candles i believe Dude, his metaverse of movies is so crazy. Not uh, uh, not to not include the ones you've just mentioned, but how about National Lampoon's Vacation? Uh, I didn't know that was John Hughes. Dude, how about Mr. Mom? Yep, that's a great another. Dude, <laughs> he mentioned The Breakfast Club. Ferris Bueller's Day Off! Yep, that's another Everyone one. knows this movie, so that's a pretty popular one. Pretty in Pink. Planes, trains, and An automobiles. automobiles. Oh, that's a great movie. So again, Uncle Buck, Home Alone. So a lot of his movies, like he was pre, he's he, like he was like he was like probably the essential '80s director. Uh, '80s and '90s, because a lot of his movies, especially Home Alone, some of the later ones, dwelled well into the '90s. But god damn, he really brought real life into film in a way that was able to be almost. Comical, Home Alone. This dude, parents there right now are the ones who created millennials. They're making fun of it. He was like, "Yeah, you're just leaving my fudging six year old at home to go brush his teeth and do whatever because I forgot about him because I was so worried about getting to Paris." And then after I'm almost at Paris, I'm like, "Oh darn it, I forgot the littling." <laughs> um, so with word science, for those of you who haven't seen it, and kind of spoiler uh, here for you. Um, for the older people, I don't really care if I'm spoiling for you, spoiling it for you. But for the younger people who might have never seen it, uh, this is definitely a spoiler for you. Uh, you have two kids who are kind of geeky, um, had no experience, like probably you know, with getting a girlfriend and stuff like this. And I think a lot of it has to do with how society probably impacts uh, young men. Um, with like basically, you you know, they push like. Um, I think young men are afraid to approach women. And I, I think a lot of it has to do with like the whole like aspect of like, if you even like try to say like hi to a girl or like, or whatever, they almost try to demonize you as a, as a male. Well, it's all depending on upon their own pheromone sense and sense <laughs> of man, you are either a winner or a loser. Mm -hmm. You either approach or you don't. But I, I think you're absolutely, absolutely right with the sense of, Man, Hughes is really pointing out the trials and tribulations of two not so successful males who have all the potential in the world but aren't given a chance because of their ironic, you mentioned this last week, social score. Yeah, and you know, here you see like um Robert Downing Jr. Jr. and his buddy, they're kinda like I guess if you will, like the alpha males, or they're like well, I wouldn't even really call them alpha males. I call them like the preppies. I wouldn't even call like to me, alpha males would have been the jocks. But they were definitely not jocks. They were the closest thing in that time. And <laughs> in that movie. In that movie, they're probably the closest thing to a jock, but they were more like preppies or whatever, or yuppies. Um, but then you have like the, you know, you have um the two main characters who probably fell more onto like the nerd scale with like uh being into science and old like horror sci-fi movies and stuff like that. And so they go and they like, Hey, maybe we can create our own like Frankenstein basically. And then they end up creating Kelly, Kelly or Brock. Hell of a Frankenstein. <laughs> yes, definitely. Hell of a Frankenstein. And they like, supposedly they hack into, was it the NSA and stuff like that? And like the graphics there, you can see it's like total eighties, cheesy graphics, 16 bit TI yeah. instruments. <laughs> And, you know, like maybe back then it might have been easier to really to hack into like the military and stuff like that. Um, but it, it, it was kind of fun because it almost kind of gives you um, maybe to a movie, I believe, that came out maybe a couple years earlier, a flashback to War Games with uh, Matthew Broderick. I think that came out in 82 or 83. I could be totally wrong about that. Um, See, it sounds right. 83. 83. Two, okay. two years earlier, but also of the same consequence. However, more based on chess. <laughs> yes. Um, but um, these uh, these kids, they end up getting Kelly, Le Kelly LeBrock. They make her. She uh, basically kind of, for lack of a better term, grooms them 
and they she grooms the two kids, these two guys. Mentors them, yeah. yeah grooms, that's the perfect term. And and grooms them to where they can actually like have self confidence in themselves and go after the women that they that they want. Yeah. And I think it's a great coming of age story. It is. As I feel like most John Hughes films are. Like, I literally don't think exactly. he failed at this task. Even to the point where years later, the movie Easy A really emphasizes that, where, like, this is another example, a modern-day example, and it's this thing where it's like, man, a family dinner is a rarity, and you usually have to introduce things like movie night and different specials um, to really make it something attainable, achievable, desirable. Um, I don't know that I did the same thing, but I absolutely do my Friday nights with my kids, and I don't spend a ton of money. It's like the cheapest dinner I eat all week. Nacho night with the kiddos and a pint of ice cream, and sometimes we binge watch on Pirates of the Caribbean. Sometimes it's Fast and the Furious. Sometimes we go out to see a movie. Sometimes it's, well, once at least it was... Uh, vampire diaries so with that though i i think all these john hughes films are real where it's man you literally see the kids perspective on almost every affront i think the great movies really bring in the parent perspective pretty in pink um this is not john hughes but easy a they bring this different perspective where parents are also like hey dude like i remember this is tough I get you. I'm trying to relate. Um, and I think for me with my kids, I'm at that age where I'm like, man, I remember. Just don't forget me. I will watch 30 hours of Vampire Diaries with you. Just remember how much I cared about every minute we spend together. And I think that's what John Hughes does. He brings in this piece. And he usually doesn't focus on the parent-child perspective. Again, Pretty in Pink's a pretty good example. But he usually he's focused on the boy and girl perspective or the boy and boy perspective. And this is not saying that the boys are attracted to each other, but friends were really focusing on like, hey, man, where are we? Like, let's really be honest with, you, with each other. We're nowhere. Like, our only chance as a woman is to make one up. <laughs> And then Kelly Brock, psh, you couldn't come up with a better dream date at the time. So for me, I'm like, I'm not sure where else you want to go with this movie, but for me, one of my favorite um, favorite scenes in the movie is definitely when they first start creating Kelly Brock, going like you know, attack like, uh, like hooking up into the NSA, and then like uh, uh, putting like the like uh, allig alligator clips onto the uh, Barbie doll, and then they're wearing the bras over their heads. I think that's like one of the funnest and like probably the most classic scenes in the uh, in that movie. Going leading up all the way up to the part where Kelly Lee Rock stands in the in the doorway of the bathroom. Hence, special edition movie cover. <laughs> I don't know why they had to do the Predator, like, infrared coloring on it. But, yeah, Kelly the Brock, you're a win. <laughs> <laughs> so what would, be one of, what would be one of your favorites? Okay, I've got so many. Okay, the scene you're talking about, no, I absolutely love. Part of what I love about it is I had forgotten before I watched this with my kids how utterly adult it was. <laughs> <laughs> He's pulling out Playboy magazines. Parts of anatomy are showing <laughs> that you have to bear to do, uh, you know, like defibrillators and stuff. Like, remove all clothing. There can be no wires in the bras touching the body. That's what I'm talking about graphic-wise. You're doing CPR, might be using a defibrillator. Got to remove all the clothing. Stick on those stickers. I had completely forgotten about that as I'm like... Wow, my kids are watching this with me. At least one of them's almost 16. The other one's already in college. So oh, I can't be an idiot anymore like some people. Well, maybe their mom. <laughs> I don't know. Um, like, let's be real, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with that, that is absolutely one of my favorite scenes. Is all these pieces that go into what does it mean to make bra? Why are we making bras on our heads? Dude, shut up. <laughs> Like tradition or yeah. what do you say? <laughs> There's no ritual literal, or something. Yeah, like that. ritual. I literally no reason to that. And later on, it comes up again. Shut up, dude. Just wear it. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. is like, what? <laughs> but with that, Kelly Rock comes out, dude. That's the end of the scene. It's like, okay, how do you top this for that time period? You literally don't. And that's my tragedy with this movie is. People don't remember it. They had a lot of good scenes. And there's a, the other one where they Dude, go into the jazz one. club. 
Dude, the Jazz Club is one of my two favorites. I was just mentioning number three. <laughs> you want to bring us a Jazz Club? Go for it, man. Uh, I was going to say Jazz Club is another one of my favorites where they go in there and they get like <laughs> super, like that deal. Like the only two like white people basically, or three people, white three people go into like this black Jazz Club. And I think later on you see a, another white guy in there. Um, who's probably a regular, but it's just funny. Like probably you know, also like less white than Italian. Yeah, <laughs> but they. It's just funny how like how the night progresses and they get drunk and uh, Anthony Michael Hall's character starts to talk like them and stuff like that. It's I find it as a pretty funny scene, dude. It's hilarious and I love also. By the way, cheers. Uh, they bring up scotch and uh, every one of the drinking instances of the movie. Um, I love that episode. And part of it's because they're like, why are we here? We're so uncomfortable. Why are we taking this risk? This is, this is absolutely a risk. And Kelly, the rocks character, do they ever give her a name? Lisa, Lisa. So Lisa's like, I'm here to have fun. And they're like struggling until they finally loosen up and then they have a ton of fun. They go home. It's a mess. The brother, Chet. Played by Bill Paxton. Chet, Chet, Chet. He literally blackmails his brother. <laughs> uh, played by Ian Smith. And he's Ian Smith, the perfect version of a pussy, right? The guy's mm -hmm. like, I'll give you my retirement, my social security, and my college fund. What? <laughs> Damn you, Ian Smith's character. Like, no. No, you don't know, own this giant turd, pointed out later, anything. So with that, my uh, another one of my favorite scenes, oh, my goodness, is the bar scene when Lisa lets them know they're going to be having a party at Ian's house. And the two cool kids, Robert Downey Jr. being the main one, uh, is like, hey, they go up to the bar, and one of the black guys from the from the jazz club. from the jazz club, one of the gentlemen from the jazz club's like, we'll get you guys, and they're like, I want a scotch. Now, here's the first clue. You know, these guys know nothing about what they're actually ordering. They're playing it cool. Lots of people believe them. A 16, 17, 18 year old girl would believe them. This guy's like straight around the rocks, and the guy's like, just give me the whole bottle, and the. <laughs> The bartender's like, I tell you what, you bend over, I'll shove it straight up your ass. On the rocks is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Priceless. That was pretty good. Uh, another one of my favorite scenes is when Lisa turns Chet into a big pile of shit. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> that whole, that whole scene. On. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that whole scene when he's a big pile of dung, uh, and he like he has like a tongue like a like a frog and snatches like flies and stuff out of the air, that that's just so wrong, but yet yeah, so funny at the same time. It's great. Uh, like to me, all of the movie is great because it also emphasizes the tragedy is almost too late for most people that can understand it. Like the end of college, the end of high school into college is going to be tough. And you're going to make friends and you're going to make enemies and not everything's going to go your way. Man, just let it go and go with it. So what, you. what was your number one favorite scene? Because I think you mentioned, like, you, we talked about two and three, but what was your number one? I don't think you pointed that out. Oh, man, for me, number one is absolutely right after the party. Lisa's facing Chet, Bill Paxton. And she's like... Ian, you take the Porsche. Michael, you take the Ferrari. He's like, Ferrari? <laughs> <laughs> and so you get this new situation now while where Michael Anthony Hall is taking his date, kiss, who knows how far it went, home. And they're literally outrunning police and successfully do th so in a one of the worst models, the Ferrari Mondial of all, uh, one of the worst models of Ferrari's everything leaked oil and had all sorts of issues. It's like apparently our current NASA spacecraft. <laughs> um, but he has that experience that I wish they would have made a sequel to this movie 10 years later, showing what the impacts of some of these things could have, would have, and did do. 
Well, you know, if she could create these things, right? How come she couldn't, like, let them keep the Porsche and the Ferrari? I think the point was, you've had a taste. Go get it, boys. Too bad. They should, she should let them keep those two I don't cars. know, because then you get weak. Like, tough times make strong men. Easy times make weak men. I think the point was, this has been a tough time for you, boys. Be strong. And that's what I would have loved to see is... 10, 20 years later, a, a sequel where it's like, yeah, this well, is what, what happened. 10 years later, they thought they were on top of it. And ultimately, the tragedy is it'd be like that remote control movie Switch or whatever it was where he goes up and down and loses and gains. And that's just really life, though. And uh, right. I wish John Hughes would have. I, I don't know what he's done since. John Hughes, if you're out there still. And you hear this. Do a movie about 40-something-year-olds. Take that jump. If you can make a movie like The Breakfast Club, 16 Candles, any of these. Weird science. Let's do it and make it so meaningful to this generation again that you change lives at a point where it'll stick. And I think that's the truth. I think you change lives at 40 plus, usually at six. You change lives at 18 to 24, it teaches. Fun all at six. All right, is there anything else you want to cover about this movie? No, I loved it. John Hughes, thank you for everything you brought us. Uh, Ferris Spieler's Day Off being one of my all-time favorites. Apparently, as I most recently learned, Breakfast Club being one of Mila's favorites, um, which I am actually happy about. I want her to know that is life. It's okay no matter which section of the economy or life or success others view you in. You can still win every damn day. I love that. That's what that movie walked me away with. I will forever appreciate you, John Hughes, in that movie. All right. Yourself. Uh, Anything else you want to walk away with? No. I think uh, John Hughes does a great job with his movies. So there's nothing really, I, there's nothing there for me to really like add on to it. Um, I, I think it's a great movie. It's a great coming of age movie, and um, I'll just leave it at, at that. Saddest John Hughes movie? Nothing's the saddest. What about Planes, Trains, and Automobiles or Uncle Buck? John Candy did a great job making you feel sorry for him. I think that was part of the intent. I think that was the closest he got to what I'm asking for, which is a 40 to 50-year-old version. I know I said 40-ish. Let's do 40 to 50. Because you had a 30-year-old John Candy playing those roles. What's it look like? And I, Maybe that's the point is John Hughes is like, yeah, if you guys haven't learned from now, I don't want to teach you. You're not going to learn. So I know next week I, I, I we didn't get the bottle yet, but it's going to be the open fourteen. Oh snap! Sea breeze, here we come. Sea breeze, here we come. Only minute in this, but the brine adds so much. I think to that fruit flavor. I agree, and I, we're going to do a movie review of Gattaca. Ooh, dude, that's a deep movie. Most people don't understand just how deep it is scientifically, emotionally, psychologically, physically dynamic. I thought so too. So I think uh, Gattaca would be a good one to do a movie review on and uh, enjoy a nice. Uh, how do we end up going back to Ethan Hawk? <laughs> just saying, no complaints, total appreciation. I actually wish he would do more Shakespeare. I really do. Um, the guy is super talented, but I also think the difference between him and Christian Bale is he knows a line he shouldn't cross. Um, Christian Bale, I think, crosses that line and just hopes for the best. And I think Ethan Hawke's like, eh, no. <laughs> I don't know why I went back with Ethan Hawke. There was a, I was thinking about the Breakfast Club, but we just did a John Hughes movie. Dude. And um, I thought about like a couple others, but... Um, we had talked about a while back about discussing um, Gattaca, and uh, since she had mentioned um, the uh, uh, Artemis uh, failure of a launch, God damn it! Nessa. And uh, 
25,000 employees couldn't help get her. Then you have uh, Open 14 being more, you know, like uh, having to do like uh, like the seaside type of stuff. Mm. And where Gattaca takes place is like near the ocean. So um, I think all of that kind of plays together. I think it makes for a good, um, a good, uh, a good, a good episode. Undoubtedly. All right. Um, with that, um, anything you want to say to the peeps? Drink responsibly. I usually do. And uh, I, I'm not laughing because you. I'm just laughing because you said drink responsibly. Like <laughs> you don't know. No, right. let's like be honest. Uh, and sometimes I go out and I'm smoking cigars and I'm walking and I'm not totally responsible. But what I'm saying is, if you know you're going to drink, have a backup plan if you shouldn't drive home. I think we know that, um, and we're very sincere to that. I really hope that all of our viewers really have and then really think about doing the same. Please do not ever put yourself in a position where you risk your own life or anyone's that you love. And what I mean by that is you may not always be considerate of the person that's crossing a crosswalk or in a car uh, that you wreck into. And this is the morbid piece. That's the reality piece of vampire diaries is there are ripple effects. So you may not, kill anyone else but you may get that dui that ultimately alters your future life with your family friends anyone that changes your life with them multiverse and yeah it's literally it's a situation where just uh take care of yourself and i mean that. and i'm not saying don't get drunk i'm just saying if you do it drunken responsibility not <laughs> drinking responsibility drunken responsibility do it in a place where you've got friends or someone who's like, yeah, I'm the designated not be drunken friend. We're not driving anywhere. Don't be an idiot. And I mean that sincerely. Really be responsible to this and just have a plan. Have a plan. And uh, remember, there are lives you impact, and it's not just your own. And ironically, when people typically screw up, the lives they impact the most negatively are not their own. So just please drink responsibly, have fun, love scotch, enjoy the barley, enjoy the craft. I'll learn a little bit. This is from Glenn Scotia. Ah, delicious. Noah. I second everything he said. Hopefully you guys all have a great weekend. For those of you who listen to us on uh, Podbean and Spotify, thank you very much. Um, also, for those of you who watch us on YouTube and uh, Rumble, thank you very much as well for that. And hopefully you guys all have a great week, and we'll see you all next week. Like, share, subscribe. Remember, Gattaca. And cheers. Cheers. na 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 Scotchman. We hope you enjoyed this evening's episode of Scotch Hour. If you did, please like share and subscribe also if you have not done so already please become a patron member with memberships starting as low as one dollar a month thank you and hopefully you have a wonderful evening